Guys, I have a problem. I really like this knife. This is, as you can see spinning in front of you, is the Travessa Orion. And my problem with this knife is, well, it's pretty ugly. But I'm conflicted because it's overall a really good knife. So let's turn this around. Let's take a look at it from above. We'll look at the good points, the bad points, some specs, and uh, I'll tell you what I really think about it. Guys, like I said in the intro, I do like this knife a lot. I just wish it wasn't so ugly. This is the Trivisa Orion. Now they have a whole bunch of other knives. This just is the one that Jared sent me as a gift. And as much as I like this knife, I have to say it's pretty ugly. It looks like a sturgeon. Um, so first things first, what we're going to do is we're going to put a spec sheet up over here so you can take a look at that. And then we're going to do some size comparison. We always do size comparison, even if it's an inch, uh, like a first impressions video. So let's go ahead and pull up some knives. Your first one's going to be the Monterey Bay Knives a Slayback, only because it's just what was in my pocket. And I didn't have to go anywhere to get it. So you can see this is not a big knife, but it's also not tiny. This is a fairly good sized knife. So, you know, in comparison to the Slayback, let's go ahead. Your next knife's going to be... The Spyderco Endura 4, I not a, not a small knife at all. A lot of you guys should know that's a fairly large knife. Um, and you can see just a little bit smaller than the Spyderco uh, Endura 4. So, and always your final knife is going to be the Chris Reeves Sabenza Large 21, um, almost one for one in length on this knife. So you can see, uh, I always use the Sabenza in case you guys are new to the channel. I always use the Sabenza because that's a knife the majority of knife people and knife enthusiasts are going to recognize the size of because they've seen them or owned them. So let's get this out of the way and talk about this knife. All right, guys, let's talk about the good things about this knife because this is actually a really good knife despite sorry jet coming over sorry about that guys happens all the time they got a new batch of pilot star training what i was saying is i really do like this knife despite the appearance which we'll talk about later this is done in green g10 with a D2 blade that is a very good functional blade. Um, nice piercing tip. The edge geometry, blade geometry, pretty good for a really thick chunk of steel. They did a really good job with the grind. It comes down, it cuts really well. D2 on this was done very well. As you can see, it still pretty much has the factory edge on it. The only thing I did was after a couple uses, I honed it on uh, an ultra fine ceramic to bring that edge back up and then stropped it. Ergos, for the most part, are stellar. You've got not just this really sh great blade shape that is very functional and cuts really well, but you've got a nice, a nice sized handle that is fairly contoured and is comfortable. I, I have to say I am a fan of the bigger, thicker handles. They allow you to use this knife and use it a lot without getting any fatigue. Um, if you do a lot of cutting, you have to think about how much you're gripping. The smaller and narrower a handle is, the more you're gonna have to grip down on it to maintain that grip. And this is a nice, big, thick knife. They have done a good bit of weight reduction in the liners, which means that this is, well, it's not a very light knife. It's not super light. It's still really comfortably weighted. The balance on it is just about neutral. Um, I prefer a tip forward. I don't like the tail heavy, but this is just a pretty neutral balance on this knife. Center of gravity is just at about the pivot. In hand, like I said, really, really comfortable. And you've got this large area up here that you can get right up on it if you're cutting cardboard and things like that. You do have that beautifully shaped blade where it comes down. You have this area that's flat if you're cutting down on stuff like cardboard. And you have this rounded area if you need to cut around things. And then, like I said, really, really piercing. And you can get way up on this, even though this is a relatively large knife, and do some fine work on things if you need to cut something out. Uh, I know that's not what everyone does, but definitely is things that happen, you know, throughout your use course throughout the lifetime of a knife. Um, this is done as a, a liner lock and the liner lock is really good. You've got good access to that liner and the action on it is just shy of drop shot, just a quick shake. Um, it really came pretty pretty much broke in when it came to me. Um, the bearings on this, I have yet to have this apart, um, but looking at the, the 
detent, I would say you're looking at ceramic bearings because typically if you have a ceramic detent ball, you're gonna have ceramic bearings. The checkering on this, the uh, milling on this is not super aggressive, but it gives you a good tactile feel. And like I said, with that being a big, thick, bulky handle, it's really comfortable. Pocket clip on this, I'm gonna say, pocket clip on this is pretty good. You've got this high area here. It glides into the pocket. Since it's a liner lock, you don't have any hitches and catches. Um, like I said, with this checkering, this texturing, it's not real aggressive, so it's not gonna tear up your pockets. And that pocket clip is just about right for any pants. And in hand, it is not bad. It's pretty comfortable, and I expected it to be a super bad hotspot. Like I said, lock up, dude, the action on this is really smooth. It's not, like I said, not quite drop shut. It's just shy of that, but there is no friction to speak of. It is very, very smooth. Um, flipper tab on this has just ever so much slight jumping on that to allow you to get on that. And the flipper tab does not hurt the hand. It's not like you're up against it and that jimping being really sharp or something gets up against your fingers. So all in all, this is a really good knife. It takes up a little bit of space this way in pocket, but it's rather narrow and it's easy to carry. And with it having a fairly deep carry pocket clip, I can carry this in the pocket forward up towards the zipper as opposed back towards the back and that allows me to carry two knives so i can carry this as a secondary so there you go with the good stuff so that's all the good i've got on this let's flip this knife around other side of the coin other side of the knife and talk about the bad stuff let's talk about the functional bad stuff and there's not much uh, there's not much on this knife that is something that you would have to think of as bad but there are a couple um, I talked about the ergos and I said, for the most part, they're really good. The only thing I don't like, and now that I've got this video out of the way, I'm probably just going to take care of it myself and hit this on a scotch break um, out of my grinder. Um, I'm not a fan of this jimping being here. Um, it's it, I, it doesn't really serve a purpose because when you're on the knife using it, you're not there. You're not holding it here or here. So that's done more as an aesthetic touch. And I'm not a fan of jimping for aesthetics. It needs to be functional, and that really does not serve a purpose. This high spot here as well, it's not bad, but you can de you're can you definitely aware of it being there in hand right there on that finger. It's not super sharp, but it's just enough that like I, I recognize when it's there. So that's another thing. I probably will just round this off a little bit more on a Scotch-Brite. It's not that big a deal for me. Other functional issue. Now I talked about the pocket clip being really good and I don't mind it in hand. The only issue I have is if you look how that pocket clip, they use domed head screws instead of like uh, some other companies do, such as, oh, I think We Knife Company does it. Their screws, um, the, the pockets for these on the pocket clip are are uh, countersunk and they're flat topped screws instead of these button screws. So that allows you a little bit of excess. What happens with these is, sorry to, to go on a tangent about the screws, but those screws stand up tall enough that you have on thicker pants, like say a pair of 5.11s with that reinforced pocket or a pair of thick jeans or riggers pants or something like that you have a hard time getting it all the way up and over those screws. It wants to stop right here. You still have enough pocket clip that it's holding it in place, but if you want it all the way in, it can be problematic. Now, the last functional thing is, it's an ergos thing. This is really sharp right here. So like this, this uh, the, the lock bar on this frame lock, or on this liner lock, so the liner kicks over, and this is still pretty sharp right here, and you can definitely feel it. It's it's a, it, and it's in a weird point where it catches, where that little corner of it catches right there on your finger and you're very, very aware of it. Um, so like I said, something else I can easily take care of. I'll just take the scale off and I'll just knock that corner off. I don't care about the aesthetics of it, but that's just one of the, the little ergos things. Minor, minor little things in the overall big scope of things. I can always change those screws out. I can rectify this on a scotch bright on my grinder. Um, and now let's get to the elephant in the room. As much as I like this knife, it is ugly. It really is. I hate the fact that it's, I hate the fact that it is so ugly. It looks like a sturgeon. I can't help it. That's all I can think of when I see it. I'll put a picture of a sturgeon up here. So yeah, it's just, that's all I can think of. 
I, I don't know if it's, I think maybe if they just took these out and just did a fuller, that might change it a little bit, but it definitely is not a super attractive knife. Now, for me, I don't care. I'll still carry this. I'll still use this. It's a very good knife. Um, I was kind of on the fence about it when I first got it because I initial impressions, we look at things with our eyes, just like, just like you say you eat with your eyes, you make a first impression on a knife based on the way it looks. And I was hesitant to carry this and I'm glad I did because it is a very good knife. I'm really happy with it. I just wish it looked a little bit better. So guys, that's all I've got on this one. If you're interested in this knife, I'll, I'll try to find an affiliate link, put it down below. But it is a good, good knife. If you're just looking for a really good all-around work knife and you don't care what it looks like, this would be the one. And I have to say, looking at the Trivesa website, their other knives are much more attractive than this one. And it, if their knives are, if all their knives are as good as this one with assembly and everything, I, I would be pleasantly pleased to have any of them. I'm pleasantly pleased to have this one. I just, it's like, a, like, a, like they always said about fat chicks and mopeds. Just don't let your kid, your buddy find you riding one. Don't let your buddy see you carrying it. So guys, let's turn this around and do some final thoughts. So guys, there you go, the Trevesa Orion. And like I said, it is a very good knife. Well-made, well-constructed. It's just not appearance-wise that great, but their other knives, their other knives are very attractive. Most of those ones that I saw on their website, very good looking knives. So Trevesa, if you're watching, I'm not bagging on it. It's a really good knife. I really do like it. So I, I guess it's like, uh, I have a friend that married a, married a chick and we're all like, she's not that good looking. And he's like, yeah, but she can cook. She can't cook. So, at any rate, guys, that's it on this one. If you like the videos, give them a thumbs up. If you don't like them, give them a thumbs down. This was a fun video. Um, I can't change the content if you don't tell me what you don't like. So use that to get, just to let me know. But like I said, I gotta know what it is you don't like. Uh, if you wanna support the channel, it's as simple as like, share, subscribe, drop a comment, hit the bell icon. If you do hit the bell icon, make sure you've got notifications set to all, and then make sure you've got notifications set on your device as well, or you won't get notified. Guys, if you want to support the channel financially, there's a bunch of ways down below. All of them are affiliate links. It's like self-sponsorship. When you guys purchase something, I get a little bit at checkout. And there's a handful of them that have discounts associated with them. Uh, Doll Strong Knives still right now is running 10% off when you use my, my affiliate link, 10% off your order. Coffee Brand Coffee is 5% off and Atlas VPN is 85% off for a two-year subscription. That's $44 for two years of a very good VPN. And those are all products I use myself so I can vouch for the quality. Other ways you can do it, I have a membership down below. It is all tier based. All of the members get access to my Gilded server uh, where we chat and hang out. Baseline and premium tier members are automatically entered into a giveaway that I do on the Gilded server and the premium guys have access to a sharpening tutorial series that's behind a paywall here on YouTube. You can only access it as a premium tier member. Uh, and the final way is I have a merchandise store over on Ember Shirt Co. where I've set up a coupon code that will save you 10% at checkout. Um, it's crazy sharp, all one word, capital C, capital S, crazy sharp, and it works anywhere on Ember Shirt Co. and it saves you 10% at checkout. So guys, that's it on this one. I love you all. I hope and am having, I hope you're having a good Wow. I love you all. If it's your birthday, happy birthday. And I will see you in the next video.